Hello, my name is David Shippey. I work for the IBM Corporation, and I'm here today to talk about the Power2 Plus uh, RISC microprocessor. This is the agenda that I'll follow. First, I'll talk about IBM's microprocessor roadmap for RISC processors. Uh, then I'll go into some of the project goals for the Power2 Plus. After that, I'll go into to some of the chip and system features, and finally talk a little bit about the performance. Yeah, this is the uh, roadmap for IBM's uh, micro RISC microprocessors. We first introduced the power architecture uh, back in 1990 with, with the Power One processor. And through technology enhancements, we were able to increase the uh, cache sizes, uh, increase the bus bandwidths um, with, with further generations of Power One. And with the Power 2, again, we increased the cache sizes, increased the bandwidth. But we, uh, in addition, we doubled the number of execution units. Now, at the same time, uh, with the RFC chip, we uh, offered the power architecture in a single chip implementation. Uh, and that was targeted at the high volume, low cost uh, marketplace. And, and the RFC became the uh, the basis for the 601 chip, which was the first PowerPC microprocessor. Um, after the uh, after Power 2, as you can see on the chart, uh, all the, all processors will be PowerPC compliant, and we're trying to offer a, a range of processors all the way from palm tops uh, up to supercomputers. Uh, the 603 that was introduced earlier this year is targeted at low power portable machines. Uh, the 604 chip will, be, uh, will give us increased performance on our desktop and low entry, ser low entry servers. And the 620 chip will be the first 64-bit implementation of the PowerPC. Um, it'll be targeted at the high-end technical and commercial marketplace. And, and finally, the, the Power 3 uh, will again be targeted at the supercomputer mainframe class machines, and it will be a 64-bit processor also. OK, these are, the, these are the project goals for the Power2 Plus uh, microprocessor. We wanted to leverage off of the original Power2 design, and, and we really went after two, two primary uh, things. Uh, first, we want to go after the, the high-end uh, transaction processing capability. And we also wanted to push Power2 down into the, into the low-end desktop systems uh, in, in a more cost-reduced uh, manner. And at, at the same time, for both our, our low-end up to the high-end, we want to maintain competitive fixed-point and floating-point performance. OK, this is a block diagram of the Power2 Plus uh, system. This is typical of a, one of our server configurations uh, on the high end. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the processor chips are packaged onto a multi-chip module. Um, there are eight of them. They consist of the iCache and branch processing unit, the floating point unit, uh, the fixed point unit, uh, storage control unit, and four data cache units. Uh, on the MCM, there are several high bandwidth buses. There is a four instruction dispatch bus from the iCache unit to the fixed and float units. Uh, there's two quadward buses from the floating point unit to the data cache unit chips, uh, two single word buses from the fixed point to the data cache chips. Now, coming off of the MCM, there are three major interfaces, uh, those being the system I.O. bus, the memory interface, and the level two cache interface. Um, <clears throat> the memory interface is, uh, in this configuration, is four words wide. And uh, it requires two, a uh, minimum of two two-word memory cards uh, for a base system. Level two cache uh, is packaged on SIMs, uh, it's industry standard SRAMs. And it plugs into the, the main uh, system planer then along with the MCM and the other chips. 
So for this system, uh, with the MCM chipset, uh, we provide up to, uh, with the four data cache chips, you, know, you get 128K of data cache with the 128 byte line. Uh, it's four-way set associative. The instruction cache is 32K, uh, so 128 byte lines, two-way set associative. And again, the memory interface is four words wide. Uh, we have providing uh, uh, 64 megabytes up to two gigabytes of storage. And the CPU chips are packaged onto a ceramic multi-chip module. This is uh, the Power2 Plus uh, implementation for a low-end, a low uh, low-cost desktop machine. Now, as you can see, the processor chips are now uh, no longer packaged onto the multi-chip module, which is a rather expensive solution. Um, they're, they're now packaged with uh, the Solderball Connect technology uh, discreetly onto a, a CPU card, as well as the L2 cache. Uh, we've done several, several things uh, to, this, to this system to reduce the cost for our desktop. Uh, I mentioned the packaging. Uh, the second being the data cache chips. Uh, we've reduced those from four chips down to two chips. And in addition, the data cache chip itself, uh, internally the caches have been cut in half. So, so each cache chip now only provides 32K. And that, and that makes the chip smaller and cheaper. We've also reduced the, uh, the width of the memory bus and the L2 cache bus down to two words, uh, again, to, to make the system cheaper. And that provides the capability to have a minimum memory configuration of, of one uh, double word memory card. And the CPU chips are packaged with the Soderball Connect technology. Yeah, this is a uh, block diagram of the Power2 Plus processor. The, uh, uh, the iCache and branch processing unit is responsible for uh, fetching and dispatching all instructions, as well as executing all branch and logic on condition register instructions. It fetches up to eight instructions per cycle from the cache uh, in, into either a 16 entry sequential buffer or an eight entry target buffer. It then dispatches uh, either, uh, two instructions internally to the branch uh, units and four instructions externally to the fixed and floating point units. Uh, the floating point unit receives those instructions into an eight deep queue. It then goes through a decode and rename uh, stage and there are 22 rename registers for the uh, floating point registers. It then loads the instructions in, into either a load queue, a store queue, or an arithmetic queue. And again, there are two uh, execution, there's two multiply add divide execution units providing the capability to execute two double precision floating point instructions per cycle. Now that translates into four floating point operations per cycle. Uh, there's, a, there's two quadrant buses out to the data cache chip from the floating point. Now the fixed point unit, it also receives uh, instructions on the dispatch bus, loads them into an eight deep queue. It then goes through a, a decode stage and finally into execute. The two, ex there's two execution units, uh, one being a full execution unit, it's capable of executing uh, all fixed point instructions, and that includes multiply and divide. The second uh, fixed point unit is a partial. It executes all instructions except for multiply and divide. Uh, the fixed point unit also controls uh, all of the uh, data cache operations. It has uh, all the tags for the data cache, as well as address translation uh, in, the, in the MMU. Uh, it maintains a, a dual ported interface out to the cache. Now the data cache chips, uh, they have of course the, the data cache as well as buffering for uh, cache store back and reload operations. The cache, uh, again the cache is multi-ported. It, uh, 
the cache array itself uses a standard 6T cell SRAM, uh, but it, it uses a technique known as virtual multiporting uh, to achieve the, the multiport. And, and this is done by, uh, it accesses the cache internally. It can pipeline up to uh, three accesses to the cache for every processor cycle. The storage control unit Again, controls the uh, external interfaces to the processor. This includes uh, system I.O. bus, the memory bus, and the level two cache interface. Now, as you can see, the level two cache has a direct port uh, into the I cache and the data cache uh, and, and for, for very low latency uh, operations out to the level two cache. The level two cache tags have been integrated into the storage control unit. Um, the storage control unit uh, receives cache reload and storeback operations from the iCache and the fixed point unit. It loads them into a queue and it then uh, performs a, a tag lookup compare in parallel with starting the memory operation. Uh, it starts the, the memory arbitration as well as generating the DRAM row column address. And this is all done in a single cycle. And if there's an L2 cache hit, then the, the memory operation is simply blocked from going out on the bus the following cycle. If there's an L2 cache miss, there's no penalty. The, um, the memory operation is allowed to then go out on the bus. The SCU chip also controls the external uh, interrupts for the processor as well as uh, it has a set of performance monitor counters that I'll talk about later. So the, the primary features of the processor core, uh, six instruction dispatch, uh, up to eight operations per cycle, uh, large multi-ported data cache, very high bandwidth buses, and uh, dual fixed point, floating point, and branch units. The, I'll talk a little bit now about the level two cache subsystem. Again, it provides 512K, one megabyte, and two megabytes. It is a direct map cache with uh, combined instructions and data. It's a 128 byte line. Uh, it's a store through design, and we, uh, we write out to the L2 cache in memory uh, in parallel. It uses uh, industry standard burst SRAMs with 2111 uh, bus timing, and the SRAMs run at the CPU clock speed. And in addition, the L2 cache uh, has single bit correct, double bit detect on all uh, accesses. The storage control unit uh, controls the level two cache interface. It, there's a programmable register in the SCU chip uh, that allows us to program the size of the L2 cache, the size of memory, as well as the uh, width of the, of the uh, buses. The, again, the tags have been integrated into the SCU chip for low latency. Uh, we do an overlap uh, L2 tag lookup and compare with starting the memory operation. And we also have the capability to do uh, loads and stores to the cache and the tags for diagnostic purposes. Uh, this is the technology used uh, in the Power 2 Plus. It is 0.7 micron, uh, four levels of metal, uh, one level polysilicon. The ICU, FXU, and FPU chips uh, are on a 12.7 millimeter squared die. The SCU and DCU uh, are on a slightly smaller die. It's 11.7 by 955. This is the packaging technology that was used for the Power 2 Plus. Uh, the multi-chip module is uh, 64 millimeters squared with 44 total planes, 20 signal planes. Uh, there's about 750 pins coming off of the substrate with 512 of those being signal pins. And the, uh, the other package I talked about is the solder ball connect package. And it comes in two sizes. For the bigger chips, it's 32 millimeters squared. And for the smaller chips, it's 
32 by 25 millimeters. This is the performance monitor facility that's been uh, put into the Power 2 uh, uh, processor. It consists of uh, 22 performance monitor counters uh, centrally located in the storage control unit. And then there's a control register that allows us to capture performance monitor data from each of the chips. And uh, we have the, there's, there's five counters dedicated to each of the chips and we have the capability to monitor up to 80 signals per chip. And then there's one counter dedicated to, uh, for the cycle count. Okay, this is some data that was captured for the, uh, from the performance monitor facility. Um, we've got uh, two systems we're looking at there. It's five, the 59H is a, uh, is a uh, server system with a 1 meg L2. And then the 390 is a 512K uh, L2 system, and that's, that's a uh, desktop uh, system. So just kind of going down through some of the data, uh, you can see the most, most of the instructions are fixed point, uh, about 25% are branch. There's virtually no floating point instructions. The, uh, about two-thirds of the instructions execute uh, on the first fixed point unit and the other third on the second fixed point unit. Now looking at the cash miss rates, um, the, the primarily dominated by the uh, instruction cash misses, but as you can see, we've, we capture most of those cache misses in the level two cache, uh, about 85%. And we capture a considerably less amount of, of the data cache misses in the L2. And this is primarily due to the, the, uh, the TPCC benchmark, uh, the footprint for, for instructions is, fits into one meg, whereas the, uh, the data footprint does not. Um, the other thing to notice here is um, comparing the 1 meg L2 system to the 512K, um, we, we, get, uh, we capture slightly, slightly fewer of the instruction cache, mi cache misses and, and quite a bit fewer of the data cache misses in the level 2 cache. Okay, this is the uh, performance uh, comparing the original Power 1 with Power 2 and Power 2 Plus. And as you can see, with a, uh, in one case, a slightly reduced clock speed, and in another case, uh, with slightly increase in clock speed, uh, we have a significant increase in spec uh, integer, spec floating point. The, uh, the LINPAC has doubled uh, in this, in this uh, desktop system. Now looking on down, uh, comparing the 580 with the 590 and the 59H. Uh, again, the original Power 1 was at 62.5 megahertz. With a, again, with a slight increase in the clock speed, uh, we have a significant increase in spec numbers. Uh, LIMPAC has quadrupled. And the other main thing to note here is going from the, the 590 to the 59H, uh, a significant increase in the TPCC transactions per minute uh, capability, and that's primarily due to the level two cash. Uh, that that number there is is the highest uh, highest TPCC rating for a uni processor in, in the industry today, uh, and the K dollars per TPMC was actually reduced uh, on this system. Now looking at the high end. Uh, server des uh, server class machines. Uh, again, uh, a slightly higher increase in clock speed, uh, a significant in increase in spec integer, spec floating point numbers. Uh, and here, uh, compared the TPCA benchmark transactions per second, uh, as you see, f going from the Power 2 to the Power 2 Plus, a uh, significant increase uh, in performance uh, again, primarily due to the level two cache. And, and the 357 rating on the TPCA, again, is the highest, uh, highest number that's been achieved by a uni processor today. So in summary, uh, the Power 2 Plus is a high performance superscalar risk processor. Six instructions uh, 
dispatch per cycle, eight operations per cycle. It has an optimized level two cache subsystem, very high bandwidth buses, and, and we've been able to offer a, a cost-reduced desktop system as well as on the high-end uh, industry-leading commercial transaction processing. Thank you.